Tonight is June the 18th, Wednesday. It's Management 3025. This is our last class meeting before the midterm exam, which is next week on Wednesday night at 5.30 in rooms P, as in pop-up, 160 and 260. We have two rooms reserved because if everybody shows up, we'll need them. You will need your financial calculator. You will need plenty of notebook paper, and you will need both a pen and a pencil. And a Scantron, we were just discussing, a Scantron answer sheet, the 8.5 by 11 version, the one that's sold at Santa Fe in the bookstore and at Coffee 101 in the library. Beware of other Scantrons because they're not all the same. Okay. So, anything of a general nature anybody wants to chat about before we go into cranking numbers and pushing buttons? Stunning silence. Okay. <laughs> then let's get on with it. We're going to talk about using the financial calculator. There are, I'll, I will post this video tonight, but there are others just like it already online. You can look at, they're already listed in Canvas. It's the same stuff. There are a set of, two set of problems, sample problems on Canvas, the learning management system that you should go through and work. The exam at midterm will only deal with the time value of money, what we're doing tonight. On the final exam, we will include some other calculations in the nature of break-even analysis, and we'll discuss those in class as we go along. Okay? So, time value of money. We're using the Texas Instruments Business Analyst 2 Plus, or some variation on that theme. If you have a different calculator, but it can calculate these values, no problem. Okay? If you had your uh, calculator as a phone app, no problem. Because when you take the exam, you will do all of the multiple choice discussion questions and turn them in, and then you'll be allowed to pull your calculator out and work on the financial section of the exam. If you are taking this exam at a remote location, you may want to check with them and see if they allow you to have a phone app. Many do not, and in that case, you're going to need to buy the calculator. Okay. So, here we go. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about, fundamentally, would you rather I give you $1,000 today or give you $1,000 in a year? Which would be your preference? I'll take it today. You'll take it today? Why? Because I can put it in the bank and earn interest off it. That's right, because you have it to be able to put it to work for you now. So money has more value today. How much would I have to give you today? to be the equivalent of giving you $1,000 in a year. That would depend on the interest rates you could earn. You know, and you said, well, if I could earn 4%, then some number times 4%, 1.04, 104, would give me $1,000, and then you'd be calculating the present value of that $1,000 in the future. And so we're going to jump from present values, what's it worth today, to future values, what's it worth if you have it and invest it, What's it worth at some point in the future? Our basic buttons on the calculator we're going to use are present value, N, which is the number of years or months or however often your interest is compounded on your investment. Uh, IY, I slash Y is the annual interest rate you're going to be earning. And then future value is what you would have in the future. So if your calculator has these buttons, you're in good shape. Basically, I'll give you three of these and you calculate the fourth one. That's pretty much how it works. Now, what we're dealing with right now, this first half, is called lump sum values. We're going to take a single value now, what's it worth in the future? Or we're going to say, if I want this much in the future, how much do I have to put in the bank today or in my investment? After we finish lump sum, then we'll talk about regular payments. What if you put $100 a month into an account? for seven years and you kept it there for 24 years, how much would you have? Then you have a stream of payments. We call those annuities, just a regular payment. We'll get into annuity, annuities later. Lump sum, simple numbers. If you had $500 today and you put it in the bank for six years and it earned an interest rate of 4%, we might ask, how much will you have in the future? A little apostrophe means calculate the future value. Well, a couple of things about this calculator. When you look at the calculator and you turn it on, 
before you do anything else with these financial calculations, look at the second row, first button, it's kind of yellow colored, and it says second. You press that, and then you run all the way over to the far side to the third row. It says FV, future value, press that. Now what's going on, second, and then you see just above FV in yellow writing, it says clear time value of money, CLRTVM. What I'm doing is hitting the secondary function for that button. It's going to do whatever's written above the button. And I am clearing out all the memory registers that may have numbers in them. So my ca calculator is now clean and ready to go. Before I do any calculation, every single time, I want to go second, clear TVM. And then I can begin. If you fail to do that and you start off with old numbers that are left in your calculator, that won't be good. Okay? Every calculation. Second, clear TVM. Second little idiosyncrasy of this calculator. When I'm going to put in how much I have today and want to know how much I will have tomorrow, one of these two numbers has got to be a negative. If you put in 500 as a negative 500, your answer will come out positive. If you put in 500 as a positive number, it will give you a negative answer. You can disregard the negative sign. Just don't have an you know, emotional breakdown just because you keep getting negatives, okay? So let's do this this way. I'm going to put in negative 500 for my present value. So I've got 500, and then on the bottom row, at the bottom, you've got a plus and minus sign. I hit it once, and it makes my display negative 500. Negative 500 and press PV. Now it's in the registers, a negative 500. 6% annual interest rate, I sit, hit 6, and then the I slash Y button in the third row. Finally, I'm going to earn 4, I'm sorry, that was 6 for N, my mistake. And then 4 is the annual interest rate, that's IY. Sorry about that, okay? Okay, Mr. Strickland, hold on, hang tight. Negative 500, right. press PV. Right. 6, press N. Okay. 4, press IY. Okay. And I put these three numbers into my calculator. Okay. Now I want to know what this one is. And so there's a, bo a button up at the very top left called CPT. It stands for Compute. I press Compute and whatever it is I want to know. In this case, future value. CPT and then future value. Anybody got an answer? $632.66. And about 66 cents. You're off a few pennies. It's not the end of the world. Okay? Yes, ma'am? I am off more than that. And I, I get 51008. 51008. Me too. The whole time I've been off. How many decimals does your calculator display? With the answer or? Yeah, it'll show the same amount of decimals anytime you put something in there. Um, five. Okay. Let me take a look at it just for a second. I've watched your videos and I get a different answer every time. I don't know what you got two decimals showing. Right? So I'm going to change that to the uh, second format. This is how many decimals you want. I'm going to say four. Come in, come in. We'll just edit that part out. You okay? Yes, sir. All right. We'll loan this back and forth for you, Sir? We'll loan this back and forth. Okay. How are we doing? Everybody okay with that answer? Let's turn so it around. It's, it's, I'm sorry. So on the on the, the test, if we start out, I mean, if you just have 506 four percent, then we have to do the the future value. The answer is correct if we say negative 632 or we say 632. I assume you will omit the negative and tell me yes, it will be worth 632. Okay. The calculator throws a negative. I in gotcha. There. Okay. And, and you, the calculator saying, well, you got to take that out of your pocket to have that coming I gotcha. back. Okay. Okay. When they first made these things, they didn't do that. I don't find it very necessary. All right? Turn around real quick. 
I want to go on vacation in three years, and I can earn 7% on my money, I'm going to need $5,000 to go on my vacation. I'm going to make three deposits. I'm sorry, that's an annuity. I'm going to make a single deposit today. And it's going to grow for three years at 7%, and I want to have $5,000. How much do I need to put in the bank today? What's the first thing you do? Second clear, the Second clear TVM. I'm going to put 5000 change it to a negative, and I'm going to put that for future value, F of V. Okay. Three is in, seven is IY. Go ahead. What's the delete? The clear button and second? Second clear TVM. It's the it's the future value button. It says FV, but above it it says CLR TVM. Got it. Got it. Yeah. When you're going future value, um, then your timeline, then your interest, does it matter that? Doesn't, doesn't matter what order you put them in. Not at all. So now I'm going to compute how much I need to put in the bank today. Compute present value. And it just disappeared on me. $4,081.49. I'll put that in the bank. Wait three years at 7%. Assuming you could get 7%, which you can't, but you know. You're going to put 4000 in there? Put $4,081.49 in there today. I'm going to wait three years with it compounding at 7%. And then I'll have five thousand dollars. That's being patient. Yeah, I got five thousand dollars. That's being patient. Yeah, that's assuming you have the self discipline not to pull it out to yeah. go, you know, whatever <laughs> foolishness you had in mind. That's let's say you just put it in a mar uh, money market account and you can't touch it unless you want to pay. That, that's that's one way to do it. At least it works. Yeah. Other questions? Think about this. Let's call that four thousand dollars for easy figuring, okay? How much interest would I get at the end of the first year? How much is that? 7% or 4,000? Mm, public school math. Here we go. <laughs> What's 7% of 4,000? Just, just 4,000 for easy figure. 7% of 4,000. I'd have $280. You see that? I would add the 280 to whatever I put in, and then it would earn 7% the next year. That's what they call compound interest. You familiar with that? Einstein is supposed to have said compound interest is the most powerful force on earth. Einstein, okay. It is incredibly powerful when you put your money somewhere and it builds on itself. It's working for you that whole time, compounding on itself, and you're not having to do anything. Except for when you owe IRS. Well, when you owe the IRS, they compound the interest and you pay that to them. That's right. So we try not to owe the IRS. Exactly. More stories about that after. No, we don't even talk about that a long time ago. <laughs> All right. Those are the, the, the most basic situations. Figure present value, figure future value. Suppose I said this. I got $2,000 now. I want to have $5,000 in seven years, what interest rate would I have to earn? <coughs> First thing you're going to do, clear TVM. Anybody get an interest rate? About 14%? Yeah, I got 13.98. Oh. Yeah. This was my present value. I made it a negative. This was my future value. This was my N. And then I calculated the interest rate, and it came up to be 13.98, or give or take. I need to earn 14% on my money. 
So once again, I can give you any three of these and you should be able to give me the fourth. Okay. Questions? <coughs> Are we missing? Uh, I guess year is not, oh, seven years. Never Good. mind. There Good. it is. Good. It gets a little messier. Uh-oh, I see a head shaking out there. <laughs> you keep erasing it every time I try to redo well, you, it. you got to tell me not okay. to. It's okay. It's okay. I'll do the next one. Okay. I'll catch you on the next one. This gets a little bit messier, but not any more complicated. When you talk about what happens if your interest compounds every quarter. Okay? What if your interest compounds every quarter? Every three months, they compound your interest, figure your investment, and then it grows again. So let's say that, for example, you had $3,000 in the bank. You're going to leave it there for eight years. And it com compounds at 4% quarterly. Now, 4% is the annual rate. So every quarter, it compounds at one quarter of that rate. It quarter, four times a year, it compounds. So every month, every three months, it compounds at 1%. only 1%. Okay. But here's what happens. This is my interest rate per year, except since it's quarterly, I'm going to take 4 divided by uh, 4 quarterly compounding periods, four times a year. And then how many times is my money going to compound? How many times are they going to figure that interest? Four. Four, times, four times a year. Right. Eight times for eight years. For eight years. So oh, now right. I have to multiply the N times how often it compounds. So this becomes 32. So I got present value negative 3,000. I've got 32 for N. I got 1 for IY. And then I'm going to compute the future value. How are we doing? Okay. I know it compounds quarterly. I know that my annual rate is 4%. So I take the rate of interest divided by how many times a year does it compound? Four times. Four divided by four gives me one for my IY. One percent? One percent. A year. One percent per quarter. One percent per quarter. Per quarter. Because it's four percent per year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then I say, well, I'm going to leave it there for eight years, but it compounds every year four times. So four times every year, four times eight is thirty-two is my end figure. Oh right. So you just instead of plugging in the eight after you do all the math, you plug in thirty-two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So n is thirty-two. Iy is one. Pv is negative three thousand. Anybody calculate a future value? Forty-one twenty-four eighty-two. That's what I got. Four thousand one hundred twenty-four dollars and about eighty-two cents. I'm not erasing a thing until you nod your head. Okay. First of all, clear the TV in. Set it up again. T, V is in Victor, M is in Mike. Yes. That's the abbreviations above the FV button. Okay. So you hit second FV if you want to think of right. it that way. Okay. Okay. So now everything's empty. Zero is displayed. Put negative 3,000, we'll put 3,000 and then change sign on it down at the bottom. On the very bottom row on the far right side is a change sign. When it displays negative 3,000, push PV. Okay. Then, since it's compounding four times a year for eight years, I say eight times four is 32. 
And when 32 is displayed, I press in. And then I said it's 4% qu per, per quarter, but four times a year. So 4% divided by four times a year. When one displays, press I slash Y. And so now you put in present value, N, and IY, and then you hit compute, CPT, FV. This looks really easy right now. There, it, it doesn't get, I mean, as long as you can keep the little things straight, like quarterly compounding for eight years, four to eight. As long as you keep that straight, it doesn't get any harder. Yes, ma'am? I'm sorry. Can you show me what you did on mine? It went back when I cleared it out. Back to the Okay, so far, any other questions? Let's do one of these again. Go ahead. I don't have a compute button. Is that possible? I mean, this is the download. So the trick is when you get multiple the compound or daily can I erase this now? <laughs> and then I get zero. Love it. Yes, go ahead. We're going to do another one just like this. I got $1,000 today. I'm going to put it in the bank for six years. It's going to compound, be careful here, monthly. It's going to compound monthly. It's going to earn an annual interest rate of 5%. What will be my future value in the end of six years? So we're going to use that. Sounds about right. What am I going to do? I'm going to say PV equals negative 1,000. I'm going to say N equals 6 what? Times 12. I'm going to say IY, my interest rate, equals what? 5 divided by 12. And just do 5 divided by 12 equals, and whatever number is displayed, push IY. Okay? And then finally I'm going to go down and say compute future value. Two people saying the same thing, I'm, I'm tempted to go with it, you know. See some of you sitting out there looking pretty bored. I interpret that to mean you did all this at home well, and you understood it. That's fine. Where you did the six times twelve? Are you doing that right there and hitting the? Yeah, I go six times tw six times twelve equals boom in push in. Okay. 
Other questions? That's going to be for 72. So 72N. Just out of curiosity, are we even going to go into compounding, like continuous compounding, or is that beyond? We're not going to do it in this course. Uh, I know when I taught the finance course, we did it. I don't know how Mr. Oliveira handles that, how much of that he does. But I do know he uses the calculator. And I know time value money is an integral part of this course, finance, for sure the strategy course if I'm teaching it, and depending on who's teaching managerial economics, it may be used there as well. So it's something everybody needs to be comfortable with. Any other questions before I put another problem can we up? Try it? Can, you, can you do this one? Because I keep coming up with something different. Okay. I'm Press clear entry, right? Yeah. Zero displayed. Press clear TVM, second TVM, second FV. Okay. 1,000. Present value. No, did you put a negative sign in front of it? Yes. Okay. 36 for N. No. Six times 12, 72. Oh, uh -huh, that's why. Okay. okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Other questions? New problem? You ready? No. Who said no? I did. Okay. 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 Good deal. I try to take direction well, you know. Let's do one more. We started out with $20,000 in the bank, and we left it there for 11 years, and it compounded semi-annually. With an annual interest rate of 7.5%. How much will I have in 11 years? So it's only compounded twice. Only compounded twice a year? Twice a year for 11 years at 7.5. How do you get the annual interest? 7.5 divided by 2 equals, which equals in whatever number is displayed there. So 7.5, which should come up what? 3.75? And then calculate future value. <laughs> 495. Say again. Sorry. Uh, 4954. Yeah, 954. 4954. Four, 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 954. How many pennies? Nine. Zero. Zero? Zero? Yeah, that's rounded. $44,954. More than double the money.
usually your response is pretty, oh, that's not so bad. If you start early. You, know, you don't start early, it's a whole different ballgame. Well, no, I've probably only the last 10 years or so. It's okay. Out of almost 30. Questions? Anybody? Going once. Going twice. I'm going to race it here. You ready? Can I erase it? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Well, I've heard that attitude before. i got a week to figure this damn thing out. <laughs> Parenthetically, something called the Rule of 72. The Rule of 72. It says if you take the interest rate that you earn on an investment and divide that number into the number 72, that tells you how many, the number of years it'll take for your investment to double. If you could earn 6%, it would double in 12 years. If you could earn 8%, it would double in 9 years. Math not getting away from you, is it? 8 into 72 is still 9? <laughs> It just is. <laughs> Can you explain the rule of 72 again? Okay. Take the interest rate you're going to earn on your investment. Mm -hmm. Divide that number, 6%, 4%, 8%. Divide that number into the number 72. The answer you get is the number of years it will take your investment to double. And I don't mathematically know why. But I know if you take that uh, calculator and you plug in 1,000 for present value, and 2000 for future value, it'll work. Any interest rate you want, it'll tell you how long it takes to double. Okay so far? Just a little parenthetical note. Let's go to the other half of this conversation called annuities. This is a little bit Oh, maybe a little bit more complex, but not bad. Annuity is a regular payment, okay? Regular periodic payment. And so now we're going to start using the PMT button because that stands for payment. If I put $500 per year into an investment that earns 6% per year. And I continue to do that for 20 years. How much will I have? So instead of a present value, I've got a payment. Not a lump sum, a regular series of payments. Same idea. PMT, negative 500. Remember, one's got to be negative and the other will be positive. Uh, IY6, N20, compute future value. I've got 18,392.80. Anybody else? Okay. Yes. 18,392.80. American. Switching Changing PM, PM, for PV, you're using PMT in this instance. Oh, yeah. Now, i got a question for you. First, is this clear? Well, when, Go ahead. When you say the 500 a year, is that just putting so much a month that it equals? No, no. Every January the 1st, I go to the bank, I give them $500. Okay. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Once a year. Once a year. That's how much you put in. That's how much I put in. Okay. So if I put in that much every year, basically like, a, like an IRA. Okay. Except you're making your, your deposit once a year. Instead of monthly or biweekly or whatever your deductions are. Okay. Now, answer me this. How much money did I invest here out of my pocket? 
Five hundred a year for twenty years. How much is that? Oh God! I put ten thousand dollars in the bank. I got eighteen thousand plus out of the bank. That's compound interest. Okay. I made eight thousand three hundred ninety-two dollars over and above my investment over that twenty-year period. Okay, so far. I could turn it around, and I could say, look, remember that vacation I was talking about? In five years, over which time I can earn, I don't know, 7% per year, I want to wind up with $15,000 to go on vacation with. How much money do I need to put in the bank each year for five years in order to have that money available? So you need to find payment? Just, I need to, just, to calculate the payment. Make this a negative, this will be a positive. $2,608.36. dollars $2,608.36. Okay. Good. Does that sound about right? Mm -hmm. Five years for $15,000. That's $3,000 a year, but I'll be compounding some interest, so I don't need quite $3,000 a year. Because then interest will compound on, on itself. Yeah. So you're saying every year you'd have to put 26 every in? Every year. My payment in, my, my deposit into my vacation account, $2,608. Okay, so far? Keeping those numbers. Let's change it and let it compound. Mm. Quarterly. Now here's, here's the thing to be careful of. I'm going to now make my payments quarterly as well. Okay? So, what's my number of compounding periods? Quarterly? Four times a year for five years. You got that? So, N is now 20. What's my interest rate? Per quarter. Seven. Seven divided by four. Whatever that displays is IY. Should come up 1.3, well, 1.75. Okay, so far? Put in future value. And calculate your payment. 632.87. 632.87. Eighty-seven. How often do I do that? Four times. Quarterly, every three months. You have eliminated, eliminated the idea that this money, when you put it in in January, it earns interest till March, and then you put another deposit in, and, and the compound interest aspect. About twenty dollars difference. How are we doing so far? So if you told me I want to retire in thirty years with a million dollars. And I'm going to put money in every month, and I can earn 6%. Could you tell me how much money to put in every month? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Let's try. Can I erase this? <laughs> I got 30 years, but I'm going to be doing this monthly, so I assume it compounds monthly. What did I say the rate was? 6%? Mm -hmm. 
and I want to have, when I retire, I want to have one million dollars. How much do I have to put in every month? Interest rate doesn't change. So it's only compounded once a year. Right? But it's compounded monthly. Oh, it's compounded. It is compounded. When we put, I said, how much do I put in per month? You go, oh, per month, everything's now on a monthly basis. Okay. Good question. So. $5.51. Sounds good to me. I don't know. It's worth it. <laughs> That's better than the error I got. Now, Mrs. Strickland, why would it be 6 divided by 12? Because I'm earning 6% on an annual basis, but it's compounding 12 times a year, monthly. So I only get 1 12th of 6%. Okay. Say again, total? 9 99551. And that's a monthly payment? Yes, that's what we just under a thousand dollars a month for thirty years. A thousand a month for thirty years. Three hundred and sixty thousand dollars turns into a million. Okay. <laughs> Questions before I tweak this again. Anybody? Anything? I have to keep my payment uh, period per month consistent with my interest rate compounding period. I can't interchange, I can't be different on those and still use this calculator. Okay. All right so far? Almost a thousand a month. What if I decided to wait and then I only had 20 years? What would I have to, how much would my deposit have to change? All you have to do is do 20 times 12 is 240, press N, and everything else in your in your computer, in your calculator is the same. So just make that for N and then press for payment. Let me do it before you clear. Yeah. Once you clear it. What should have told us that? Yeah, once you clear it, you put it all back in again. What did you just What if I only have 20 years? So this becomes this becomes 20 times 12. And the rest of it's the same, but what happens to your answer? What you got? Fifty-four. And fifty-one. Twenty-one. Sixty-four. Thirty-one cents. Thirty-one. So your payment goes up by more than twice. Because you dallied around for 10 years. You see what he did there? Changing the time frame. Your end is going to change. Instead of 360, it's now 240. How are we doing? We're doing great in class, but it's. <laughs> That's why I wanted as, as much as you could to practice the stuff before you come to class. Because the first time you see it, yeah, it's all over the wall. You got it's math. How do you learn math? Right. Repetition. So if this is the first time you're looking at this, you're behind the power curve. So you've got seven days to redo this as many times as you can before it starts being wrote. Automatic. Question so far? Can I erase this? Slow learner, but I learned. <laughs> Suppose, 
Suppose you wanted to buy a house and you needed to borrow on a mortgage $140,000. And you were willing to do this on a 30-year mortgage. And the mortgage rate per year was, let's say, 5.82%. I've seen your credit record. You were lucky to get that. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely How often do you make a mortgage payment? Monthly. Typically monthly. So all of this has got to be converted over to calculate your monthly payment. Say it. The, the amount of the loan is the present value. That's the money you get today to buy the house with. How much is in? In is 30 years once a month, 12 times a year. How much is IOI? Everything's got to be on a monthly basis. Divide that by 12. 5.82. Oops. Divided by 12 equals, and whatever that number is, right. press IY. So we have $25.69. I have 0485 so I have to round it up. If it gave you 0.485, just put that in. You don't have to be to the penny on this thing. $823.24. I'm sorry, say again. $823.24. Uh, $823.24. Anybody else? Yes, no? <laughs> That's your principal and interest on your mortgage payment. That's pretty good. Your principal and interest. If you go in and look at a mortgage payment, what do you find out? Not much of it goes to principal. When you start the first few years of your mortgage, probably $800 of that is interest. $23 is paid against the loan. And the amount paid against the loan increases a tiny bit every month. But it takes you basically 10 or 15 years before you really have much equity in that house, especially if the market's been flat and it hasn't increased in value. Now, what you can do, if you are in a position to do, is start paying your regular payment plus extra money towards the principal. Don't just send them extra money. Send it with the understanding this is all going to principal, not also some other damned interest for you. Uh -uh. All this for principal. And if you find yourself able to make a $1,000 a month payment towards principal, you could whittle that loan down pretty quick in about 8, 10 years. How are we doing? What else would you have to pay for your house? Insurance. Insurance. Insurance taxes. taxes. Maybe a homeowner's association. Yeah. 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 Okay. So when we do loans, we could do a car loan, right? You want to borrow a fifteen thousand dollars to pay a car, or you got to finance it for forty eight months at seven point six eight percent, you tell me the monthly payment. There should be no problem. Right? Right. All it takes is practice, repetition. Now if you go look at those assignments on Canvas, there are a variety of different applications or different sorts of problems. And it would help you to go through as many of those as you can. The answers are there. And you can check your work. Oh, sorry, can I erase this? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's one of the problems you will have on the exam. The numbers will be changed. But the faces will be the same. <laughs> You are 28 years old. You have plans to retire 
at age 66. When you retire, your goal is to have an investment that gives you $3,000 a month. Your life expectancy is 81 years. We know that's a lie because we know what kind of lifestyle you lead. But we'll pretend. And you figure that over this lifetime of yours, you can earn, on the average every year, oh, 6.35% annual rate of return. The question is, how much monthly payment needs to go into your retirement account starting now? This is a little bit of a complicated problem. I will refer to it as the retirement problem. As we set them up this way, we just mess with the numbers. Okay, when you finish taking notes and you're looking at me, I will continue. Make sure you get your notes right. Don't go home, go home with something that doesn't make any damn sense, right? <laughs> All right, think of it. Here's you now at age 28. Here's you when you retire at age 66. And here's you when the world finally catches up with your no good life at age 81. Okay? You have to have a certain amount of money right here in order to take out $3,000 a month for how many years? 15 years, from 66 to 81, 15 years, and you know you'll be earning on the average 6.35% annual rate. The question is, how much do you need right here when you retire in order to do that? That's the first half of the question. So what? am I asking you to do? What is the $3,000 a month on your calculator? Which button? Payment. It's the payment. So this is your payment. How many payments do you want to receive? 180. 180. 12 per year times 15. So 180 is in. This is all converting now to a monthly basis. So what will be your monthly interest rate? It's 6.35 divided by 12 equals, and whatever number shows on your calculator, push IY. Okay, so far? Now what do you want to calculate? I want to calculate the present value I need on that day. So I'm going to say calculate present value. That's how much money you need in the bank on the day you retire. So you can pull out 3000 a month for 15 years. <clears throat> so your bar bill every month almost. What's your total? $347,671.90 American. That's how much money you need in the bank. What is that? 347 comma 671. 347,671 and 90 cents. Another confirmation on that, anybody? Good. Questions so far? Good? I'm 
backwards. What is that? That's how much you put in? That's how much you have to That's pay. how much money you got to have the day you retire at age 66. That's got to be in the you bank. You pay me $3,000 for food. In order to be able to take $3,000 a month out of that account to supplement your lavish retirement style. So by age 66, I had to have that money. That is correct. By age 66, you need $347,000 in change. Okay, so far? We're halfway there. Everybody okay with me so far? Now the question becomes, if that's what I need when I'm 66, that amount becomes a future value that I want to accumulate. 347, 671, 90. So how much it would take to get? And how many years do I have to accumulate that? 38 years. So N is 38 years, and we're doing this on a monthly basis. So 12 times 38 is N. What's that? 436? 456. 456, okay. You've got 456 months to save that up. Same interest rate. Your interest rate we're keeping constant just for convenience sake, right? IY is 6.35 divided by 12 equals whatever that is. And then what do I want to calculate? The payment. I want to calculate the payment I have to make each month for the next 456 months. Anybody get a total there yet? Let me know. Say again. $181.75 a month. Anybody else confirm that number? I got a different number? Say again. 182.22. There's a little rounding difference in there somewhere. If you, if, you, if you compute the number out ahead and enter that value, instead of letting the calculator do it, it'll throw it off. Okay. Is that attainable at age 28? Absolutely. I'm not sure you could get 6 and 3.35 percent, but stock market returns on the average would exceed that, at least historically. So this isn't outlandish. This is the retirement problem. I tell you how old you are. I tell you when you're going to retire. I tell you how long you're going to live. I tell you what you want for a payment, and I tell you the interest rate, you do the rest. Okay? So how are you going to want this written out then? I mean, are we like showing our work on the paper? Yeah, I want to see your calculations. If you just write a number down and it's wrong, you lose entire credit. But if you show me your calculations and you just screw one little thing up, you get most of the credit. Best way to list it to me is to go with this. Here's what I'm putting in for the values on my calculator. And then if you want to, you know, draw out some sort of diagram explaining it, that's cool too. So the thing to remember is if it's a payment button or a present value button. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the concept you've got to keep straight in your mind. You'll have three or four or five problems like this on the midterm. And you'll see these again, by the way, on the final. Is the final cumulative? It is in the sense of the finance, because I'm going to make you do this again. It is not cumulative with respect to the Kanicki book. It's just on the last eight chapters, 9 through 16. And it's not cumulative with respect to the uh, Caproni. Caproni. Caproni book. Thank you. Okay. Too many names. I got grandkids in town. I barely know who I am. <laughs> I'm lucky I'm here. Where am I? You know? um, yes? Oh, I just wanted you to kind of, sorry, I'm still trying to figure out the calculator. Okay. So. Let me, let me re-emphasize what's on the syllabus. The Kanicki section is all multiple choice, 40 questions, drawn from the questions you have. The Caproni section is three or four questions drawn from the questions you have. So the calculator? Three or four from each chapter? Or no, no, three or four from the total Caproni. And the, the financial questions are just like this, just like the examples. Three parts to that test. You must make a C on each part of that exam to pass this course. Okay? 
So there's no such thing as saying, I'm no good at math, I'll just make up for it on something else. Uh-uh. If you work for me and I give you things to do, you don't get to just belly out on something because you can't do it. I gave it to you to do because, damn it, I'm paying you to get it done. Same approach here. There's no, I'll just let that skate and make up for it here. You do that in a job, what's going to happen? That door's going to hit you right in the fanny on the way out. Okay? Caproni, that's an essay question? Caproni, or yeah, short answer essay. I would, I would caution you on that. Don't be too brief. Think of that about that, all of you. When you're answering discussion type questions, I hesitate to call them essays. To me, an essay question is six or eight pages written. These don't have to be that long. But any discussion question, think of it in terms of this is where I can show what I know. And if they ask me about this, I can explain that, and then I can explain how it relates to this over here and also this topic over here. So now you see I know what I'm talking about. What I get too often is three sentences. Here's your answer. Well, that must be all you know. Don't do that. Okay? And if you have a problem with handwriting, write slow. <laughs> About three hours. It's very much a function of the kind of life. If you know what you're doing, you'll be out of here in an hour and a half. If you're still here after two hours, I know you're making it up. You know you're making it up. Okay. Not necessarily. No, seriously, because I. I am slow, and I use. I like being the last person out of the door, so I can take my time and not be flustered. Cause I okay. have test anxiety, so no, not necessarily. Okay. Yeah. How many financial okay. questions are there? I'm sorry. How many financial questions are there? Four or five. Okay, so we need the green. <laughs> green scantron. The eight and a half by eleven. Financial calculator, and notebook paper, pen and pencil. Okay, so you can want us to bring. Yeah, bring some empty notebook paper. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Are you what do you put? That there it says we're in P building because I know I'm going to get. We're going to be. Uh, <laughs> we're going to all be sitting oh, yeah, here and you're going to be in P building. <laughs> yeah. Or vice versa. Right. <laughs> Wednesday the 25th at 5:30, we're going to be in P either 160 or 260. They're right above. You know, one's right above the other. So where do we start at? Go in 160 and you'll Go in whichever one. Okay. We'll, we'll have one of us in each room. Can I see the There's a highlighted section on the property. Does that mean anything? I have no idea. Okay. I was just wondering if that was a... I can't imagine why I highlighted that. Yeah, I just didn't want, I wanted why they were highlighted. Because I don't go back and use the same questions every term, so I, okay. I wouldn't rely on that. <laughs> Anything else? Anything about this? Anything about life in general? So you said the exam takes about three hours? I knew we're going to say three hours you should be done. Okay. Many of you will be done in an hour and a half. Right, then I need to move my time, but I'll talk about that later. Good, no problem. Anything else? Mm -hmm. You move a hand, it's like an auction. You bought it. You've got to ask <laughs> Okay, that's all. Thank you.